Today we're talking about meiosis. Now we've already learned about mitosis, so let's review. What are the phases of mitosis in order? Well, if you watched the previous video, you can remember them like this. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. But if you can't really get the hand thing, here's another way to remember it. Now, prophase comes first, that start, starts with a P, then metaphase with an M, then anaphase with an A, and then telophase with a T. So you can spell it out as PMAT. PMAT are the phases of mitosis in order. Now remember that, it's gonna be important when we move on to meiosis. So we know we get half our genes from each parent, but how does that work exactly? How do we get half of dad's genes and half of mom's genes, but mitosis gives us an identical copy of cells when they divide? Well, there's a special process called meiosis that helps us get those cells where only half dad's DNA and half mom's DNA are ready to be fertilized. You can't just take a body cell from one parent and a body cell from another parent and make a child. That would be too many chromosomes. So we know it takes a sperm cell from dad and an egg cell or ovum from mom to make a fertilized egg. Well, those sperm and egg cells are actually made really differently from the way the rest of ourselves in our body are made. So sperm cells and egg cells are so different, in fact, we have different names for them. We call them gametes. If you're a little lost already on what's a gamete and what's a body cell, let's review. Now remember, we call our body cells our somatic cells, somatic cells. And our gametes are going to be the cells that only have half the chromosomes, so sperm and egg cells. Here we go. Dun 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 dun. Liver cell, somatic or gamete, somatic. Dun 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 dun. Hair cell, somatic or gamete, somatic. Sperm cell, gamete. Egg cell, gamete. Got it? Okay. All of our body, except for the sperm cells and the egg cells, are going to be somatic cells, body cells. They have the regular number of chromosomes. But sperm and egg have half the number of regular chromosomes. So we get half from mom, half from dad. Everybody's happy to make one fertilized egg or zygote. Write that vocabulary word down, zygote. Okay, so how do we get these gametes anyway? How do we get these special sex cells that are only going to have half the number of chromosomes that the rest of our body has? Well, remember, the rest of our body's cells, when they have all their chromosomes, are called diploid. And when sex cells or gametes are there, we call them haploid because they only have half the number of chromosomes. Haploid, half, kind of sounds the same. So remember, mitosis is going to produce our somatic cells or our body cells, like the cells in our toes. So think mitosis, your toe, right here. Now, meiosis is not going to produce those kinds of cells. It produces those special cells we call sex cells or gametes like sperm and eggs. So, in meiosis, we're actually undergoing two nuclear divisions in order to split into our sperm cells and egg cells. Let's check it out. Look, sir. Okay, so keep in mind that before meiosis begins at all, the DNA undergoes replication just like it did before mitosis started. So in this example, n is going to equal 2, so our 2n, or diploid cell, would have four chromosomes, and that's what we start with. We see one, two, three, four in interphase. Okay, so in prophase one, or the first version of prophase in meiosis, we're gonna have the chromosomes lining up together as tetrads. So homologous chromosomes, or the chromosomes that are the same, are gonna line up together. Now in prophase one, there's a very special thing that occurs called crossing over. And this is the part where two chromosomes can actually physically exchange some genetic information. This is going to lead to huge genetic diversity. And this is one reason why all of our siblings don't look exactly alike. So we look different from each other because we're actually getting different versions of our parents' DNA every time there's a crossing over. So in metaphase one, the tetrads are actually lining up at the equator. And you can see here where the genetic information has been recombined. And in anaphase 1, the tetrads are going to be pulled apart by the spindle fibers, and entire chromosomes are going to be going to the poles. And then in telophase 1, uh, chromosomes with two chromatids each are going to decondense, and a nuclear envelope is going to reform around them. So each nucleus is now haploid. 
So keep in mind that it's not the number of chromatids per chromosome that determine whether a cell is diploid or haploid, but it's the number of actual chromosomes and whether they're paired. So here we have two total chromosomes, and that means that we're haploid, and here we have two total chromosomes, so that's haploid. Here we have one, two, one, two, three, four, that means we're diploid. Okay, so the next step is going to be where we'll separate these sister chromatids from each other. So the same thing is going to happen again. We're, on, we're going to undergo PMAT twice, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And when it happens the second time, we entitle those prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2, and telophase 2. So in prophase 2, chromos chromosomes with two chromatids are going to become visible and condense. In metaphase 2, they're lining up at the equator. And in anaphase 2, they're being pulled apart by spindle fibers, and you'll notice now it's the individual sister chromatids that are being yanked apart. And finally, in telophase 2 and cytokinesis, chromosomes with only one chromatid decondense and get surrounded by new nuclear envelopes. So, I didn't draw them all, but the four daughter cells are now all haploid and have the right amount of DNA, so they're ready to develop into sperm or egg cells now. Now you'll notice too, not only are there less chromosomes here than there were at the beginning, but they're also genetically different because we underwent recombination. So if you want, go ahead and draw this on your own in your notes and try to pay attention to the number of chromosomes and chromatids you have. Now remember, if this is our chromosome, that's a big X, the sister chromatids are this is one sister chromatid, and this is another sister chromatid, and they're held together in the center by the centromere. The whole thing is called a chromosome. The really important things to remember in meiosis are that there are two divisions. Here's the first one, here's the second one, and that it undergoes PMAT twice. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase once, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase twice. That's meiosis. Okay, so let's look at these two processes side by side, mitosis versus meiosis. Now, in mitosis, we only have one division. So the cell is only dividing one time into two daughter cells. In meiosis, we actually have two divisions happening. So this cell divides, and then those cells divide. So we have four daughter cells in the end. In mitosis, the daughter cells are genetically identical to the parents. So they have the exact same information in the DNA, whereas in meiosis, we actually have genetically different daughter cells. In mitosis, we are producing two daughter cells, like I said, and in meiosis, we are producing four daughter cells. Uh, in mitosis, we go from 2n all the way down to 2n, and in meiosis, we go from 2n to n. Um, so this is a diploid cell going to a haploid cell, and this is a diploid going to a diploid. One last thing. In mitosis, there is no crossing over, but in meiosis, there is. Okay, so you think you got it straight? Mitosis, meiosis, different number of chromosomes, different number of cells, it's all a mess. But tomorrow in class, we'll get a chance to practice it. And actually, next week is going to be our test. So get, start getting ready to review all the other things we've done so far in Cell Processes Unit. So that means uh, our cell energy, how we get energy, how we get our ATP, whether it's through respiration or fermentation, and our mitosis that we've already studied, along with the cell cycle and cancer. So it's a lot, but we're going to work on meiosis first, and then we'll get to reviewing for our big test next week. See you guys later.